some have a stirring in their soul to be an iconoclast. Carolyn Miss said one of the most noble callings is as she put it is one which shatters an illusion. Iconoclasts shatter illusions. Glore. They do it in very direct, blatant, upfront, and often public and prominent ways. There are five iconoclasts in our society, I believe, that represent a lot of important aspects of iconoclasm. Interestingly, I believe each of these iconoclasts represent the different stages of spiritual evolution as presented in a book I believe was called What is the Purpose of Life, which is a spin-off of the Conversations with God series. There are five levels. The first level is the basic hedonistic level. The book has the second level being a fundamentalist level. The third level is atheist, rationalist type level. The fourth level and the fifth level are Eastern spiritualities, deeper spiritualities. An iconoclast on the first level is Eminem. In prior talks recently, I have been condemning Eminem. He does some good things. He's an iconoclast in the sense of race. He is doing what Carolyn Miss said. He is shattering an illusion, namely the illusion that white people can't be rappers. Beyond that, a lot of his iconoclasm is at a very low level. He swears. He says really obscene things. He says he wants to put anthrax in your tampon. This is going against the grain, and this is great, in a sense, but it can be a lot more noble. This is iconoclasm without sophistication. Iconoclasm is good. But it can be always better. It can be more evolved. The second level, as we mentioned before, is the fundamentalist level. And an iconoclast on the fundamentalist level is Fred Phelps and his Westboro Baptist Church. A lot of people don't see them as iconoclasts, but they definitely are. They're all about going against everything people value in society. Even things as seemingly basic as the, the dignity and Privacy of a funeral. They go after things all the time. Al Franken said, Ann Coulter is political pornography. That's a good analogy. I believe Westboro Baptist Church is religious pornography. They're iconoclasts. They're going after these things, the Catholic Church, powers that be. Very noble aims. But they don't put any substance into it. Priest rate boys, priest rate boys, priest rate boys. That's what they say. They're trying to get a rise. Just like pornography is logical to the point of being illogical. It's too focused. And that's a problem. They're too focused. They're going right for the juggler. They're stripping off all the layers. This is iconoclasm without wisdom. On the third level, you have your atheist rationalists. And we have plenty of iconoclasts of this level. We have people like Madeline Murray O'Hare, Dan Barker, Annie Laurie Gaylor, and plenty of people on the internet. I listened to Pat Connell recently, so he's fresh in my mind. These people uplift rationalism. And they will tell you they're these big free thinkers. They're these big opponents of organized religion. They're down with gods. They have the tenacity and the temerity to question God, they say. This is a very good thing. It is very wise to question God. Some people say they are religion. Indeed. I think there's some validity to this. They're very rigid. They talk about free thinking, but in reality, they only question a few things. 
They don't question democracy. They don't question this or that. They question God, 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 God. They're all cookie cutters. They say the same thing. One, actually it was Dan Barker who told me he likes the way I debate religion because in my debates I show that atheists are not just robots. And that's the problem with most atheist debaters. You get the same thing from every single one of them. They're robots. A lot of people don't like my debating style when I debated fundamentalists in college and graduate school because I don't have the cookie cutter format. I talk about passion, emotion, wonderful things. So we can say that these atheists, free thinkers, rationalists, whatever names they want to give themselves, are iconoclasts without passion and emotion. They say rationality is the most important thing and they hold it above everything else. They say emotions and passions are to be avoided. Interestingly enough, the Unitarians, who are essentially liberal Christians, on paper it seem like a good thing, but in reality they're just like the atheists. They don't seem to have much emotion and passion to them. I wasn't too impressed with the Unitarians I've met. As we get into the other levels, an iconoclast comes to mind. Jesse Ventura. He is in the spiritual level, partially, and also partially an atheistic level. He is very intellectual, though he is considered a macho type of guy. But you can be macho and you can be intellectual. He was known for being outspoken. He was known for... Speaking his mind, one of his most famous things that he said was, organized religion is a sham and crutch for weak-minded people. In Minnesota and all across the globe, it caused a big sensation. I think that was one of the greatest things he said. It's a great point. People got bent out of shape over nothing. I liked most of what he said. I agree with most of what he did. He was a great figure. He definitely shattered the illusion that third parties can't win elections. People still try to tell me that. And I can't take them seriously. It's very difficult. It's very challenging, but they can. He was known as a loose cannon. and he, People would say, you're too honest. That's what Barbara Walters told him. She said, nobody can say you're not honest. I read one book which said he exemplifies a Shakespeare quote, which is everyone has a fault and honesty is his fault. Indeed, it's good to be honest, but it's also good to respect people's feelings. There's a balance somewhere in there. I'm afraid, as good as Jesse was, he sometimes didn't respect people's feelings, and that caused problems. It's one thing to criticize organized religion. It's another thing to just be like people say a loose cannon and say that St. Paul was built by drunken Irishmen. That is no substantial iconoclasm. Jesse mostly did good, but I believe his iconoclasm, if it had a fault, would be iconoclasm without discipline. I believe the best example of iconoclasm is motivational speaker Wayne Dyer. I agree with a lot of what he says, and he gives me a lot of wonderful things to reflect on. He and many other Eastern type thinkers gives me a lot of insight into my life. Wayne Dyer has a lot of beautiful insights. He is all about love and peace and all those nice things, but he's also about questioning things. He questions drugs. He questions our school system. He questions organized religion. And that is a beautiful thing. He has iconoclasm with wisdom, with discipline, with emotion and passion, and with sophistication. I don't agree with everything he says. Sometimes he says stuff that is pretty goofy. But overall, his existence is the perfect example of iconoclasm. It's the optimal levels to strive for. His iconoclasm goes after these false ideas, these illusions as Carolyn Miss calls them, and takes them away. He brings forth new paradigms. Every other iconoclast has virtues and values that are to be admired. He, I believe, exemplifies them all.